you think? Astonishing, old Jack. Very handsome, Pip. Look, Mrs. Joe. It's waiting for him. Aren't you going to kiss your sister goodbye? Goodbye, Mrs. Joe. We'll look after Joe, won't you? Of course I will. I mean, help him on. Help him on? How? Well, with his learning. He's the finest man in the world, and when I come into my money, my capital, I want to help him out. And you're afraid he won't be genteel enough for you, is that it? No, of course not. It's just that... No matter. Don't look so glum, Joe. I'm not going off forever. Well, it's just that this change comes so uncommon plumb, but old chap. God bless you. Goodbye, Joe.
your game. Wait in line. All right. Mr. Pip. Mr. Pip. Mr. Jaggers left word, would you wait in his room? He's um, in court at present. He couldn't say how long he'd be having a case on, but it stands to reason his time being valuable, he won't be longer than he can help. with Mr. Herbert Pocket, Mr. Matthew Pocket's son. He will take you to his father's house at Hammersmith tomorrow. Your allowance will be 500 a year. In addition, I have arranged credit for you with these tradesmen. In that way, I will be able to check your bills and pull you up if you overspend. When, I should say, of course, you will find some way of going wrong, but that's no fault of mine. Remick, my clerk will walk you round to Herbert Pockets. Goodbye for the present. Goodbye, sir. Remick, take Mr. Pip round to Barnard's Court. And thank you, sir. No thanks due to me. Mr. Pip, you were never in London before. Uh, no. Oh, I was new here once myself. Rum to think of it now. Uh, isn't it a very wicked place? You may get murdered, cheated and robbed in London, but there are people anywhere who'll do that for you. As I keep the cash, we shall most probably meet pretty often. Uh, good day. Good day. Yeah. Oh, yes. Be sure, yes, you're in the habit of shaking hands. I've got so out of it. Uh, very glad, I'm sure, to make your acquaintance. Um, good day. Good day. Me. I thought coming from the country, you might like some fruit. 
So I went to market to get it fresh. But come in, come in. Dear me. May I? Much obliged. It tends to stick, you know. <laughs> Allow me to lead the way. I'm rather bare here, I'm afraid, but I hope you'll make out tolerably well. But good heavens, I've left you with a... Allow me. Hold on, huh? Lord bless me. Am I right? Miss Havisham's. You challenged me to a fight. So I did. <laughs> Knocked you about a bit, too. But look here. I hope you shake hands. Oh, gladly. Oh. <laughs> well, the idea of it being you. The idea of it being you. <laughs> ah, Mr. Pitt. You'll take a glass of wine. Thank you. But look here. My name's Herbert. Oh, my name is Philip. Philip. Well, don't you like the name? Doesn't seem quite to suit you. Ah, dinner from the coffee shop. By order of Mr. Jaggers. Since it's at your expense, you must take a seat. Is that better? Well, I hardly think... I was brought up a blacksmith. I know little of polite manners. I'd take it as a kindness if you put me right. Well, since you ask, I might mention that it's more the custom in London to bring the spoon to the mouth. Oh, yes, thank you. It's scarcely worth mentioning. Only it's as well to do as other people do. I say... Would you mind very much if I made up my own name for you? Well, not at all. You wouldn't be offended if I called you Handel? Handel? You see, we seem to get along harmoniously. And you've been a blacksmith. And there's a charming piece of music called The Harmonious Blacksmith by Handel. Handel. <laughs> First time we met, you hadn't come into your good morning. No. I was rather on the lookout for fortune myself that day. Another bottle, Master. We do keep a good burgundy for those what can afford it. Oh, well, yes, um, certainly, by all means, a burgundy. Yes, Miss Havisham had sent for me to see if she could take a fancy to me, but she couldn't. That surprises me. Yes, bad taste on her part. <laughs> My father's her cousin, you know. But he won't bow and scrape to her like the others. Still, I look on the bright side. If Miss Havisham had taken me up, I'd most likely be engaged to Estella by now. What? Well, don't you admire Estella? Estella? <laughs> She's a tartar. Miss Havisham has brought her up to wreak revenge on the male sex. Well, what relation is she to Miss Havisham? None. Only adopted. What is this revenge? Don't know Miss Havisham's story. Best burgundy, sir. Pardon me, gents, but you weren't happen to be looking for a servant to take on, was you? Only I have been considering terminating my present employment down at the coffee house. Afraid the money don't stretch to servants in this establishment, young fellow. 
Poor sort of a gentleman what can't afford a servant. Be off with you, you young rascal. Two bob a week. Be off with you. Take another glass of wine, Handel. And excuse my mentioning that it's not expected to empty the whole glass in one go. Oh, thank you. Not at all. Now, where had I got to? Our father had died, leaving Miss Havisham the better part of his fortune. Ah, yes. An immense sum. Immense. And her half-brother was jealous. He'd been provided for, but it was all swallowed in debts. Then Miss Havisham fell in love. My father says he was a showy sort of fellow. Pretend gentleman. You know the type. Well, the wedding day was fixed. Dresses bought, guests invited. The day came, but not the bridegroom. He wrote her a letter. Which arrived the moment she was dressing for her marriage. At 20 minutes to nine. The very hour and minute at which she afterwards stopped all the clocks. And she laid the whole place waste. As you have seen it, and has never since looked upon the light of day. It had all been a plot of the half-brother to gain revenge. He was in league with the bridegroom from the first. And now she seeks her own revenge. On the whole world. And all the men in it. So I reckon myself lucky in a way to have escaped her patronage. You must make large profits at the counting house. Well, there's no actual profit in the work. Matter of fact, I have to keep myself. But the thing about the counting house is that you look around. That's the advantage, you see. You see your opening. Swoop in upon it and make your capital. Then you invest. I think I shall trade to the East Indies. Silks, spices, precious woods, well, that sort of thing. So you too have expectations. Oh, tremendous ones. Let's drink to expectations. Yours and mine. Good day, Mother. Ah, my dear boy. May I present Mr. Pip? Handel, my mother, Mrs. Pocket. <laughs> Mr. Pip! Mr. Pip. My father. Very glad to see you, very glad. I hope you're not sorry to see me, for I am really not an alarming personage. Do you care for the taste of orange flower water, Mr. Pip? What's the matter, Alec? The ball has been stuck up in the tree. I'll go and get it. I'll get it. Okay. Valuable addition to our little household, I think. Good ah. oh, Lord, a monkey. Mr. Pip, may I present your fellow students, Mr. Startop, Mr. Drummel. Honour to make your acquaintance, Mr. Pip. Monkey. <laughs>
I thought I'd divide my time between Hammersmith and Barnard's Court. Herbert Pocket is agreeable. And his father? Is he agreeable? Perfectly. What else? Well, I, I thought that I would buy some furniture, as it's rather bare at Herbert's, and a boat to use on the river. Hmm. How much do you require? I don't know. Fifty pounds? Not nearly as much as that. Five pounds? More than that. More than five? How much more? Well, it's so difficult to fix a sum. Well, come, sir, let's get at it. Twice times five, will that do? Hmm? Three times five, will that do? Four times five, will that do? Handsomely. Four times five will do handsomely. Wemmick! What do you make of four times five, sir? What do I make it? How much? Well, I suppose you call it 20 pounds. Never mind what I make of it, sir. I want to know what you make of it. 20 pounds, of course. Wemmick, take Mr. Pitt's written order and pay him 20 pounds. I knew you'd go wrong. Thank you. Care to sign this, Mr. Pip? Mr. Wemmick, is Mr. Jagger's manner always so strange? I never know what to make of him. You don't mean you should know what to make of him. He's deep, Mr. Jagger's deep as Australia. Mr. Wemmick. Who are these likenesses? Clients, dead clients. Uh, hanged, all of them. See, that's the genuine look. Nostril caught up as if with a little fish hook. Is it like him? Like him? That's himself. It's a cast done in Newgate the day after he was cut down. Um, he had this made for me. Um, these are all gifts of that kind. Uh, not worth much, but they're property and portable. Of course, don't signify to you with your brilliant lookout, but as for me, my guiding star always is get hold of portable property. I have one or two curiosities of my own at home, if you'd care to step out to Walworth. Why, well, I'd be delighted. Water, my dear. What news of your cousin, Sir George, Mr. Drummle? None that I've heard, ma'am. Mr. Drummle is next heir to the baronetcy, Mr. Pip. My own dear father was knighted, of course. But what's the use of breeding where there's no fortune? If certain persons with rich relations would only swallow their pride. My dear Belinda. Miss Havisham is the sort of relation that any self-respecting man would choke on! So, you haven't dined with Mr. Jaggers yet? Not yet. He means to invite you, told me so himself this morning, and your pals too. Now, if you're interested in curiosities, you take a look at his housekeeper. Observe her closely. Is there something very remarkable about her? The castle, Mr. Pip. Pretty neat. It's marvellous, Mr. Wemmick. I'm my own architect, engineer, carpenter and plumber. Nine o'clock every night, Greenwich time, he fires. 
When you hear him go, I think you'll say he's a stinger. It's a genuine flagstaff. Every Sunday, run up the colours. Brushes away the Newgate cobwebs and pleases the aged. You don't object to meeting an aged parent, do you? Ah, feed the carp. Hello. How are you today? Yes, I'm um, uh, jack of all trades. Hello, aged parent. How am you? How are you, John? This is Mr. Pip, aged P, and I wish you could hear his name. Stone deaf. Um, nod at him, if you please, Mr. Pip. That's what he likes. Nod at him, if you will, like winking. <laughs> This is a fine place of my son, sir. It ought to be kept together by the nation after he's gone for the people's enjoyment. You're <laughs> as proud of it as Punch, ain't you, Agent? It is a remarkable place, Mr. Wemmick. What does Mr. Jaggers think of it? Never seen it, never heard of it. Hmm. Never seen or heard of the Agent. Well, Mr. Pip, office is one thing, private life another. When I go to the office, I leave the castle behind me. When I come to the castle, I leave the office behind me. Get in here. Gunfire time. Gunfire, aged! Oh. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I can rely on you, Mr. Pip, not to mention the castle at the office. Of course. Not a word to Mr. Jaggers. And, um, and when you dine with him, be sure to look out for his housekeeper. You'll see a wild beast tamed. And... He's fired! I heard him! Yes, you heard, didn't you? You heard all <laughs> thing, didn't you? Shame. <laughs> you are, though. You're all of you too free with your money. Well, that's good coming from you. You had to borrow five pounds from Startup yourself last week. Well, I'll pay you back. Well, no doubt. But you're the last person to talk about being too free with money, I'd say. Would you know? And who are you? I've never seen you lend money to help a fellow out. And you won't. I wouldn't lend sixpence to any of you. Admirable sentiments. Mr. Drummond, I drink to you. Rather mean to borrow, then, isn't it? Not very gentlemanly. Gentlemanly? From you? Ah, uh, Drummond's jealous, sir, because Pip beats him at rowing. Uh, Pip's our champion also. <laughs> Strong, is he? Ah. I'll show you a wrist, gentlemen. Molly, let them see your wrist. Master, don't. Let them see. Master, please. Show them. Both of them. The strength here, gentlemen. Few men have the strength of wrist that this woman has. That will do, Molly. You've been admired. You can go. Gentlemen, I am sorry to announce that it is half past nine. Pray make the best use of your time. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good Thanks. night. Mm. Mr. Drummond, a pleasure to have made your acquaintance. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, Pip. I like that Drummond of yours. Spidery, blotchy, sprawly, sulky sort of fellow. I'm glad you do, sir. I don't much. You're right. Keep as clear of him as you can. But I like the fellow. He's a spider. Good night, sir. And 
a poisonous one, I shouldn't wonder. Yes, very good, sir. <laughs> Clockwise to raise it. And when it reaches the required height, you knock it off with the little handle. <laughs> Got the uh, hang of it, Mr. Pip, sir? <laughs> well, if you'd just like to sign here, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, of course, Mr. Holden. Now, um, here. Much obliged, as always, sir. <laughs> uh, good day. Good day, Mr. Philbin. <laughs> good day. Well, what do you think of it? Isn't it rather large? <laughs> Let it for you, sir. That's the laziest boy I ever knew. And he's an inveterate thief. It's from Biddy. Joe's in London. Joe Gardry, my stepfather. He wants to visit us here tomorrow for breakfast. I can make myself scarce. Leave early for the city. No matter. No, no, no. I particularly want you to be here. But you'll have so many old times to talk over. I'd be in the way. I'd be obliged if you'd help me entertain him, Herbert. Entertain him? Very well, Handel. Whatever you wish. How are you? Pip, old chap! How are you? It's good to see you, Joe. May I take your hat? Pip, you... Oh, you have that growed and, and... and that gentleman... To... Well, you look well, Joe. Oh, I, I am, thank God. And, and your sister's no, no worse than she were. And, and Betty, <laughs> ever right and ready. And all your friends go on much the same. Except in Wopsle, he's had a drop. <laughs> a drop, Joe? Yeah, he, uh, he's given up the church uh, and he's gone into the play acting, which have brought him to London and me to see him. His wish were, uh, if no offence, sir, to give you this. Herbert Pocket. Delighted to meet you, Mr. Gargery. Your servant, sir. Ah, toast. You must be hungry, Mr. Gargery. Yes, Joe, to table. Your coat, Joe? your coffee, Mr. Gargery. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, whichever is most agreeable to yourself. Coffee? Well, I will not run contrary since you make the choice. 
But don't you find it heats the blood? Tea then? Good heavens. I must be off. Delighted to have made your acquaintance, Mr. Gargery. Sir. Us two now being alone, sir. Joe, how can you call me, sir? Us two now being alone, sir. And me not having the intention of staying many minutes more. I come to the purpose of my visit, which is to convey the following message to you from Miss Havisham. Miss Havisham? What desired me to convey the following, that Mrs. Stella has come home. Stella? And we'll be glad to see him. Stella? Joe, you're not going. Yes, I am. But you're coming back for dinner. No, I am not. Joe. Pip. If there's been any fault here today, it's mine. You and me is not two figures to be seen together in London. And so God bless you, dear old Pip, old chap. God bless you. Other changes than yours. Have you left the forge? Does this look like a forge? Well, Pip, do you find her much changed? Is he changed? Very much. Is she not beautiful, Pip? Graceful. Do you admire her? Everybody must. Men love her. You love her. If she wounds you, love her. If she tears your heart to pieces, love her, love her. Hear me, Pippa. I adopted her to be loved. I bred her, educated her to be loved. Love is blind devotion, utter submission. Surrender your whole heart and soul as I did. Jack is punctual as ever. As ever.
This is where you tried to make me cry. Is it? I don't remember. If memory has anything to do with heart, I have no heart. Oh, Stella, come. Oh, I have a heart to be stabbed or shot. But you know what I mean. I have no softness there. No sympathy. Sentiment. Nonsense. Don't stare so, Pip. If we're to be thrown much together, believe for your own sake that what I tell you is true. I have no tenderness. But you shall not shed tears for my cruelty today. You shall be my page and give me your shoulder. Mr. Jaggers, you notice the new man at the gate? Yes. Well, I feel it my duty, sir. I know something of him. To his discredit? Very much so. He... Be careful, Pip. Well, he was my stepfather's journeyman at the forge. And you do not consider him a suitable person to keep Miss Havisham's gate? No, sir. He... Don't tell me why. A hint is sufficient. I shall pay him off tomorrow. You're staying at the Blue Boar. I thought it more convenient. Hmm. You intend visiting Mr. Gargery? No. Oh, well. Master. Go out and uh, buy some um, strawberries. Strawberries? This time of the year. Oh, hot house strawberries, of course. Hot house strawberries? Where am I going to get hot house strawberries? I don't know. Just look. And don't come back until you've found them. My dear Handel, the things you dream up to give that idle, good for nothing, a job to do. We're slaves to the wretched creature, both of us. Hubbard, I've seen her, Estella. I love her, Hubbard, I adore her. Of course, but have you told her? What do you mean, of course? Well, I mean, I know you adore her. But I've never told you. My dear Handel, you don't tell me when you get your hair cut but I have the senses which enable me to perceive it. You have always adored Estella, ever since I've known you. Well, you brought your adoration and your portmanteau here together. Well, I adore her doubly now. And Estella? Any idea of her views on the adoration question? She's a thousand miles away from me. I wonder. I know we're forbidden to talk of your secret benefactor, but can there be any doubt that a certain person has picked you for Estella and Estella for you? Oh, that's what frightens <clears throat> me, Herbert. All my expectations in love as well as money depend on the constancy of Miss Have. Well, of a person who could cut me off tomorrow on a whim. I can't believe you have anything to fear on the money side. It must be all settled and done, or Mr. Jaggers would not be party to it. That's a point. A good one. What a hopeful disposition you have, Herbert. Ah, oh, well. Hope is what I live on. As to the love side... <coughs> Handel, I'm going to make myself disagreeable to you. Positively repulsive, in fact. It's impossible. Nothing has been openly said between you and Estella, has it? No. Or by a certain person? No. Then it's not too late to detach yourself. 
Well, think what Estella is. Remember how she was brought up. What Miss Havisham has made of her. Utter misery may lie ahead of you. I know it, but I can't help it. Can't you try? No. Oh, well. The next best thing is to seek distraction. Your friend opens in Hamlet tonight. Wopsle! I'd completely forgotten. Shall we go? Well, why not? <laughs> 